Hello, this is Bishop Randy Morgan. Thank you for joining us today on the Covenant Network broadcast. This broadcast is devoted to learning how to utilize the unchanging, heart-transforming, world-altering power of the spoken Word of God and how to utilize it every day. If you want more information on the Covenant Network, please visit our website at covenantnetwork.net. Now grab your Bibles and some note-taking instrument, and let's get into the Word of God. Hello, and welcome to the Covenant Network broadcast. This is Bishop Randy Morgan, and I'm coming to you today from mine and Pastor Johnny's living room, where the Spirit of God is being poured out upon all people. Um, today, I just decided that I was going to do a Covenant broadcast from where I'm just relaxed and from our own living room, and I just thought that would be an awesome thing to do. Um, but today, I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about how to use your Bible. This is probably the most important uh, tutorial that I do with people. It's probably the most important message that I preach. Um, if you know Jesus is King, you know it because someone opened this book and told it to you. If you know that the Holy Spirit is available to you today, it's because someone opened this book and preached it and told it to you. Whatever revelation you have that's authentic about the kingdom of God today, it's because someone took this book, opened it, and preached it, or maybe you read it, but somehow this book is uh, uh, interplayed into all revelation knowledge and understanding that you have today. So let that sink in for just a second. And, and as you let that sink in, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this Covenant Network broadcast. Thank you for everyone listening. I thank you for everyone whose heart is turned toward you to receive revelation knowledge. I pray a special blessing upon them. And I pray, God, that you give them revelation insight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, this book does not have any magical powers. When I hold this book up, there's nothing magical about it. I remember a number of years ago, someone told me that they were very afraid, so they took their Bible and laid it at the their front door. And I told them, well, that didn't do a bit of good. You needed to open the Bible, find out what it says about fear, and say it and declare it. Don't just let the Bible be some amulet or talisman because it has no magical powers. However, this book, the words that are written in it are supernatural. And there is a difference. They're supernatural. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So if, if the word of God is spirit and life, we need to learn how to get the word of God off these pages into our eyes, into our ears, into our mouth, into our heart, and speaking it out of our mouth. The word of God will produce results if you'll get it out of the book into your heart and speaking it out of your mouth. I'm going to say that again. The Word of God, the Bible, will produce results if you'll get it out of the book, into your heart, and speaking it out of your mouth. The Word of God, formed in your heart and spoken with faith from your mouth, will produce the same results that God got when God spoke. Now that is a powerful phrase right there. You are a spirit being. The Bible says God is a spirit. Now you were created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, you're a spirit. You're a speaking spirit. And if you take God's words and speak what God has said or confess what God has said, then you'll get the same results that God got when he, speak, when he spoke. And so I want to encourage you today to get the Word of God out of the book, into your heart, and out of your mouth. Now, the, this, this tutorial is called How to Use the Bible. I want to give you a few pointers really quickly on how to maximize your opportunities uh, in getting this book out of here, into here, and out of your mouth. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. The number one way is read it, plain and simple. But never read the Bible silently if you can read it out loud. Now, if you're on a train full of people or, you know, if you're, you're sitting at work or something and you can't read it out loud, of course, read it silently, but whisper it under your breath. Every time you open the book, 
read it silently out of your mouth, read it quietly out of your mouth, or read it aloud, but definitely give some voice to it. But number one, read it. Read it, read it, read it. Every single day, spend at least 10 minutes reading and spend at least a few more minutes praying and a few more minutes meditating. But if you have to choose between am I going to bring my petitions before God or am I going to read my Bible, then I would definitely say read your Bible first because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you've got petitions, your faith will not be to the place it needs to be to meet those petitions if you've not been in the Word. The word first. Set the word in the highest place in your devotional life. So number one, read it. Number two, speak it. Um, one of the things that I do, and I don't have a copy here with me, um, I take an index card, a three by five index card, and I write out scriptures on it, and then I memorize it. Then I transcribe those from my index card into my phone, into a, a note program, and then I'll flip through the note program every once in a while and just read scriptures out loud. Take the Word of God and speak it. Number one, read it. Number two, speak it. Say it. Write it down. Speak it. Say what the Word says. When Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I was healed. I say it. I say it. I say it. I speak it. The Word of God spoken will produce amazing results. So number one on how to use your Bible, number one, read it. Number two, speak it. Number three, meditate upon it. Joshua 1.8 says, don't let the book of the law depart out of your mouth, speaking it, but meditate upon it day and night. Then you will have good success and then you'll make your way prosperous. So you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success if you meditate in the word. Now, what does meditate mean? Meditate means that I take it and I think about it. I let it mull over, over and over and over in my mind. I just think on it and think on it and think on it. Um, I, I read it and then I, I let it, I, I memorize it and I let it play over and over in my mouth. Um, I'll give you an example right here. Um, Mark chapter 12, verse 36 says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And I just meditate upon it. I just say, Jesus is seated in heaven until his enemies are made his footstool, until they're placed under his feet. The enemy is being progressively placed under Jesus' feet. God is using me to overcome the enemy and to progressively, as Jesus overcame, I reflect his overcoming because the word of God says that the enemy is being made his footstool and I'm being used by God to be a part of that um, uh, victory over Satan that's making, driving the enemy further under the feet of Jesus. Now, as you meditate upon the word, you'll get revelation. So number one, read it. Number two, speak it. Number three, meditate upon it. Just let it play over and over in your mind. And one of the ways that you meditate is do the first two over again. You read, you say, and you meditate. Meditation is you get to meditate by reading it. You're meditating by saying it. And then you're meditating upon it. So the three things work in tandem. They work together to, to get you to a place where the Word of God gets out of here and into here. So I want to encourage you today, Covenant Network, and please hear this. Use your Bible. Please don't let it just sit on a shelf somewhere. Please don't let it just sit in your phone unutilized. Use your Bible every single day. It's the most important physical possession that you have as a believer in Jesus. It's your sword. It's the sword of the Spirit. If you want to overcome the enemy, look at Matthew chapter 4, how Jesus did it. Satan came at him with attacks. Jesus said, it is written. And then he said what the word said. Jesus got the word out of the scroll, out of the book, into his heart and spoke it out of his mouth. How do you use your Bible? You use it by number one, reading it. Number two, speaking it. And number three, meditating upon it. So those are basically the three steps that I wanted to give you today. I pray that this video revolutionizes your life. If you don't have a reading plan, go to 
startmakingdisciples.com. Startmakingdisciples.com. And on the lower right-hand side of the screen, you'll see two-year reading plan. Click on that, go to today's date, and just start reading the Word of God. Um, and then sign up to be discipled, and somebody will get a hold of you, and they'll help hold you accountable. They'll study with you. They'll pray with you. Um, they'll encourage you in the usage of the Word of God. But there are mechanisms set up, even within the Covenant Network, for you to use your Bible every single day. It's time to wield the sword, Covenant Network. Let's do it. God bless you today. In Jesus' name.